Hey 12th, my name is Tyson Prouse. I'm currently serving as a deacon here at 12th and for the past many years have had the blessing of being able to serve the mental health needs of our community. As both a brother and a mental health clinician, I'm delighted to be sharing some mental health tips with you. Firstly, I'd like to normalize some response to the COVID virus. In times of significant change, it is normal to experience some reaction, whether it be fear, worry, angst, confusion, perplexity, or any other emotional response. General reactions like this are often very manageable and do not disrupt daily lives outside of what has already been disrupted by the virus. For example, you may struggle with mild focus or concentration difficulties, mild worry or distress, or feelings of longingness to connect with others. These are normal, but should be paid attention to. When mild symptoms are ignored, they often grow into something larger and less manageable. Research tells us that somewhere between one in four and one in five will experience more significant mental health distress or concerns. In times like this, we certainly see that come true. Some will struggle with more intense symptoms, such as difficulty sleeping, difficulty waking, difficulty maintaining a consistent weight, apathy, loss of energy, racing or intrusive thoughts, excessive worry or fear, irritability or anger, and many other symptoms. When these creep in, it is time to do something about them. When we are in crisis, we have a tendency to gather as much knowledge about an issue as possible. This causes us to check the news regularly or to attempt to keep up with the statistics. This is often unhelpful and likely contributes to fear and worry versus mitigating or improving functioning. Instead, checking well-known sources such as the CDC or the KDAG website on a time schedule may help. Once a day or once a week may assist in reducing the focus on the possible negatives versus the actual positives. Instead of checking the stats, consider turning off the media and going outside for some fresh air, taking a walk around the backyard, planting some flowers or another activity that can help to distract from negative thinking. The same is true of your bank account and social media. Social media, while a potentially positive outlet, can become a source of negativity and frustration, as many people in distress will turn to social media during this time to reflect on and remind you of the difficulties in your checkbooks, retirement accounts, and of the virus itself. Likely not helpful. Consider checking your bank and retirement accounts on a less frequent schedule. Watching them constantly doesn't necessarily make them improve. Additionally, it is helpful to recognize the positive. Have you taken time to look around your house, your yard, or other locations to see the beauty of God? God has blessed so many of us so richly, and yet in times of distress, these beautiful blessings from God become more difficult to see. Hope is all around us, yet sometimes difficult to tap into. Turn despair into hope by recognizing the positives and distracting from the negatives. If we are not feeding hope and faith, we are likely feeding despair and fear. Reach out to your neighbors, other believers, non-believers, and spiritual leaders. They are here to help and encourage you. Maybe you can be the help, hope, and encouragement that others need. We know that giving help is often as impactful as being the recipient of help. Consider how you may help others along this journey with recognition that you too will be blessed and likely improve. Maintain consistency and routine as much as possible. If you normally do things on a set schedule, then continue to do them on a set schedule as much as possible. I often explain life in this way. We are filling a cup or beaker with experiences, thoughts, and emotions. When we dwell on or focus too much on the negative aspects of life, we are filling that cup with negativity, which consequently crowds out the positive experiences, thoughts, and emotions that we all naturally experience. Consider focusing less on the negative and more on the positive in an effort to take control of your thoughts and emotions. Doing activities is often a way to improve functioning. Consider a puzzle, a walk, scripture reading, prayer, journaling, baking, gardening, and the list goes on. My friends, mental health concerns are not a shameful thing, although we may feel shame or despair in the midst of them. 
Despite these feelings, we can recognize that God is in control and that he provides us with areas of control if we choose to take them. What areas of your life can you rely on God with and take control of? How can you capture your thinking, feeling, or acting? Often, by becoming aware of the distortions in these areas is a great start. For example, what are you doing that isn't working for you? Or in what direction are you moving that is not the right direction? Choose one and make an effort to do it differently. Lastly, mental health concerns do not discriminate. They affect us in the church at the same rate as the general population. In fact, potentially more as we tend to focus on following God's way, which isn't easy, and certainly not our way. If you are experiencing distressing thoughts, emotions, or actions, please consider reaching out to a leader in the church, a brother or sister, a friend, or a mental health practitioner. Together, we can move forward. May God bless you as he works great things in these challenging times.